Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. I have got some of the most crazy, amazing, cool images to show you guys. I want to get right to it. Now, we're going to start here real quick. We were here a couple of weeks ago. I showed on the surface of Antarctica, there is a craft that's crashed that is nearly identical to the Baltic Sea anomaly. For those of you that are unaware, that is, of course, this image on the left. They found some years back, um, using some type of sonar imagery, I'm not exactly sure, this crashed craft on the seafloor of the Baltic Sea. And there's this long skid mark that runs right up to where this craft finally came to a stop. They've tried to explain it away, but they can't explain this other than this thing was either in flight in the air, crashed into the sea, and then hit the sea floor and left that skid mark, or was in the sea just moving at an incredible rate and crashed there. One of the two. Now, on the right, the location in, the, in Antarctica, pardon me, has the exact same features, except this one on the right has quite a bit more going on. Now, the reason I start here is that you're not going to believe this. I found two more craft. And one of them isn't even in Antarctica. It's in Australia. And wait till I show you that. But real quick, what this particular location had going for it, the impact. The impact site shows a place where pieces of the craft came off. It came to rest here. And there's some very odd, very strange imagery near it. There's things that definitely look like tracks and the pathway, and the most damning thing of all is if you follow those paths down into the shadow region, you see this base, and the light is coming from inside the base. This is unnatural artificial light, this is proof positive that what we have here is a crash site or a landing site. Who knows? And this is what they were going for. Now, you aren't going to believe this in Australia. 
I've labeled this Millennium Falcon because this one looks nearly identical to it. I'm going to tilt the angle down so I can be right over top of it when I show you this. I found this looking for a Pentagon structure. This area lines up with all of the networks. Do you see the area here that I'm circling where the trees are just a little bit different? Do you see the notch right here? I'll zoom up a little bit. There's a notch right here where the trees are okay. It's almost like a Pac-Man facing to the left. Right here. The trees. This is just like what we saw in the Yucatan. That Pentagon structure. Perfect Pentagon. Solid patch of trees for miles and miles. But in the shape of a Pentagon, a whole bunch of trees with just lighter leaves for no reason. And of course, what do we see right by here? In an, a huge, huge clearing. For no, just absolutely no explanation. This is a place called Fraser Island. And I'm going to zoom out real quick. It's near Brisbane. Brisbane, I guess I should say. Sunshine Coast. Here's Brisbane. And if you come around, I'll zoom out a little farther just so you can see it's kind of the east coast. And just north, you go onto this island, and there's really not much from what I can see on this island. It looks like there's some roads and some houses, and it looks like there's a little town called Yurong. But you wouldn't be able to see this unless you were looking for it. And this was one of those locations where I was drawing the lines, trying to put the networks together. One of the lines came right through this island. And lo and behold, this is what I found. I'm going to take a screenshot of this, and I'm going to work with the enhancement, work with the uh, contrast, so that you can see this one better. But of course I will give you the coordinates. You can find this in the most recent imagery layer, the 923-2019 layer. So it's still there, whatever it is. And the region right next to it, for some reason the jungle just stopped growing. You can see big thick foliage here. And they've spliced together two different images right at this. And so I'm kind of wondering if maybe they know something. But anyway, this is the first one. The second one is back in Antarctica. We'll go back there real quick. Once again, it's nearly impossible to see. It is, let's see if I can, uh, I was hoping the name of this would pop up. I guess it's Enderby Land, is where you would call this, in the Prince Charles Mountains. Once again, I found it, drawing lines, trying to put the Pentagon networks together. And lo and behold, let's see if I can kick the light down and make this a little easier to see. There we go. For some reason right here, we have this round shape with this notch cut out of the middle of one side. I don't know how deep under the ISIS would be, but the shapes, <clears throat> this can't be a coincidence, this many of them. Let me see if I can orient this around and show you. There we go. This is the Baltic Sea anomaly on the left. And this is the Prince Charles Mountains on the right. You know what? Let's go back to Australia real quick, just so that we can say we did the side by side with the same orientation.
All right, there we go. Okay, here's our here's our location right here. Let me see if I can get a little bit better angle on this. All right, there we go. We got one under the trees, one under the ice, and one on top of the ice. So that would be a grand total of four craft, including the Baltic Sea one. And, you know, and this goes to a lot of people ask me this question. How do you find this stuff? It has to do with these networks. Almost every single thing I found lies very near or right along one of these network lines. And it all starts with the Pentagon in Brazil, our Pentagon, the one in the Yucatan, the one in Blythe, Area 51, Iceland, all the, the one in India, the one in Argentina, they're everywhere. And if you line all these up, all of these artifacts are right along them. And this wasn't even, we're at nine minutes, and this wasn't even the only thing I wanted to show you guys today. Tell you what, let's... Uh, Let's do this one, and we'll save the other stuff for tomorrow. Got to keep the lights up for this one. And the reason I chose this one is because there's really no mistaking what this is. I guess it's a little harder to see with the camera than I thought it would be. You have these giant megalith stones in a circle right here and it's in this blood red region you know some of this might be iron oxide and some of it might not be it's definitely not lava but this one almost almost looks like if you could imagine taking your right hand and laying it out in front of you and maybe if you had some type of, of a liquid and you submerged your right hand in front of you do you see your right thumb would be here and here would be your fingers coming out pointer index ring it literally looks like a hand dipping down into the earth and picking it back up. I've never seen anything like it. And that's that's actually the hardest thing about doing this investigation in Antarctica. There are so many unique things that finding descriptive words for them is difficult. It's very easy to see that they're not of natural origin. But how they were made, who made them, when they made them, the purpose for the making of them, I, I'm at a loss. You know, that part I've tried to avoid, like the plague, I've just tried to do the data collection. I can show you what it looks like they were used for, especially the network. The way it connects would just be near, near, nearly impossible to do by chance. But we will, let's see. All right, one more thing. One more thing. We'll do the, uh, since I have an image up that um, I picked out just to show this. There were some very scary beings living at one time on this planet. And we have found evidence for them in fossilized form. This looks like an image, perhaps fossilized, perhaps this is some type of creation of art. But here is the body, right here. Down here is some kind of a tail structure. To the right is an arm with a claw.
to the left is an arm with a claw. Almost some kind of like lobster, shrimp, mantid type of thing. Now, I know a lot of people are out there laughing, right? Let me show you a picture I found of this. In comparison to the size of a man. The one on the far right is, Eurip I guess they're all called Eurypterids. And they're these giant shrimp manis style type creatures. They're real. And I'll go ahead and get rid of this and let you guys take a look at that and tell me what you think. Pretty close. I mean, you can almost see the face on the thing. But once again, like I said, I will put the coordinates for all of this down in the description. And you can go to Google Earth Pro for yourself and go to these locations, zoom in, and see what I'm showing you. So I hope everyone has a good night. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable first 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and six miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Green King.